First this morning, King Charles has paid tribute to the Queen uh, during a Commonwealth Day service at Westminster Abbey. Royal Editor Russell Myers joins me now. First day as, as first Commonwealth Day as King, mm. um, first one since the Queen died. So kind of sombre-ish affair, yes, I guess. Uh, yes, it has it, to be, doesn't it? Yeah, you're right. A sombre, a sombre occasion yeah, because yeah. you know, the, the late Queen, this was one of those days that was cemented in her calendar. We had sort of, a, of course, remember it Sunday and the Commonwealth Day service as well, where all the royal family celebrate the 54 uh, band of nations that she worked so tirelessly over 70 years to really put on the relevant map. So, mm. uh, I mean, he gave sort of tribute to his, his late mother. He spoke about her affection for the Commonwealth. And, uh, and I think the royal sort of supporting cast leading up to this big coronation that we've got coming up. Yeah, it did look, look the family united, you yes. can see. Um, that photograph that's behind us, we can see it with that. Um, it was a bit windy, though. It was a bit windy. It was a bit windy <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> Kay and Camilla were like holding yeah, on to their hats. Yeah, I mean, hold they? on to your hats. I mean, this is <laughs> extraordinary. I mean, yes. they nearly got blown away. But, I know. Uh, Camilla and uh, the Princess of Wales did turn it's up beautiful. holding on to their hats, indeed, yeah. And a couple of little nods to the Queen and Diana, because okay. Camilla was wearing one of the Queen's favourite brooches and Diana, uh, Kate, rather, was wearing Diana's earrings. So uh, I like okay. these nods, sort of, yeah. Uh, to the to the history sure. of the royal family. Can you imagine well? the jewelry boxes off them? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. Would be, yeah, they'd be absolutely. Yeah. And these aren't even in the tower. This is what they've got at this home. This is just what they've got lying around. Exactly. You know, just what they've got lying around. Exactly. And I'm sure that they had lead weights in the hems <laughs> of their dresses, yes. so that they didn't blow up in a sort yeah. of Marilyn Monroe they've been thing. Been here before. Um, lots of warm greetings. Yes, I mean, again, you, when you're talking about this celebration of the differing nations, we had King Charles mm -hmm. doing the traditional hongi greeting, and this is the Maori greeting that I've been fortunate enough to see him do in the flesh when we go to... I love that. It's just wonderful. And it's, uh, yeah, again, celebrating all the sort of different diversity sure. that we have within not only our country, but the other c c Commonwealth countries It breaks the ice, as well. that? Yeah. I mean... Well, talking about breaking the ice, <laughs> we had the new Duchess of Edinburgh, Sophie, former Countess of Wessex, sort of giving the King a bit of a shoulder bump. Oh, Look yeah. I yeah, mean, yeah. you know... They, 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 obviously get, well. they obviously get yeah, very, they do. very well. Yeah, it, it just looks like the message they're sending there, without labouring the point, yes. is just, look, we're all fine. Yeah, thanks. and I think after such a tumultuous time for the royal family, sure. you know, a lot of scandal in fighting, good to see them on sort of a level yeah. platform. Definitely. Another first for Charles, he's on the stamps now. He is, His little, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's sort of a bit. change in time, really, because you know, Charles is a, a sort of um, passion for the environment. Mm -hmm. He's a huge horticulturalist, of They're course. Lovely. They are Stamps, lovely, but it's really the sort of first time we've seen his profile. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've been used to seeing the Queen's right back to, from to, uh, 1968, it was. Gosh. We just a few weeks ago had the last set of stamps. <laughs> so if you're a collector, I imagine these will be worth a few oh, quid absolutely. in the future. I mean, you get your new passport, it'll say His Britannic Majesty. Yes, you know, yeah, it's yeah, his yeah, Britannic yeah, Majesty. Yeah. I think my wee brother. Yeah, and got, Q, got another Q. QC, now it's KC, oh, all things we're getting used to. All these to. things get changed. Now, look, mm. Prince Andrew, yes. we need to phone him. <laughs> Apparently, he's going to do another interview in America. Yes. Because the last one went down so well, obviously. He, somebody's got to be here. You know, tell him. Well, no, I'm sure they've not. tried in Please the past don't. now. Jeez. I broke this uh, last Friday and yeah, there's been a lot of traction behind this mm. because Andrew sort of feels he's backed into a corner. I mean, poor Prince Andrew, only Fergie would say that, which he did last week. But yeah. um, he feels that he has chance of redemption. I mean, he's probably the only person in the world who feels that. As you said, the last one, BBC Newsnight, Ooh, was his disaster. downfall. Yes, exactly. I think that's putting it mildly. But apparently two US broadcasters have put forward a, uh, a deal to him to mm. say that he could potentially have a chance of uh, getting his side of the story. Whether we want to see it, I'm sure we would. Yes. I mean, I was told he's seen Prince Harry on his, uh, his uh, round of junkets for his promotional tour for his mm. book. I mean, the US sort of interviewing style, not as bullish as, of course, Emily Maitlis. And so maybe he thinks he's got a chance. No, no, just don't <laughs> do it, honestly. And he's been bleating about having no money as well, hasn't yes, he? Yes, I mean... Maybe they're going to pay him. Oh, and why wouldn't they ask him? Because they know it's going to get huge. Exactly, and this is the issue for the king and the rest of the royal family, mm. because if he feels that he's got Rain nothing to lose, yeah. you know, he's been cut out of the Queen's £650 sure. million pound fortune, that's a bit of a tax uh, issue for the king. Um, but, you know, he will have been looked after.
daughter throughout the Queen's life, and uh, I suppose it's his own fault if he's he was 62 paying... years old. He's exact... 62 years 63 old. 63 now, 63, 63. Is and paying off millions to, uh, to certain individuals. Now, um... look, the coronation, obviously, we're going to talk about that in just a yes. minute, because I find it all fascinating, yes, all of these, um, you know, ancient traditions and all of that. They've recreated that little bit of the Abbey in Buckingham Palace, haven't they? So they can rehearse. They have, yeah. They've got to get it right. The yeah, I mean, eyes of the world exactly. will be Exactly. I mean, the, a sort of television audience of over mm. a billion, and, of course, they need to practice. Uh, all the eyes will be on them. Sure. So they've had a replica built of the Abbey <laughs> inside the uh, ballroom so of Buckingham Palace. Yeah, so it's fascinating. fascinating. I mean, I can't wait. It's going to be you know, a fantastic event. Well, look, there's loads and loads of, of, of quite weird and wonderful and fascinating mm. um, you know, details. And we're joined now by somebody hoping to play a big part in the coronation. Very, very interesting. Jessica Fellows. She's applied to be the official herb strewer. There she is! <laughs> the official herb strewer! Jessica, it's so lovely to see you. It really is. Now, you've put yourself forward. You have to do this, don't you? What a great, what a great idea. Yeah, I, know. I love this. I was more excited for my it'll, wedding day. It'll be a little bit. There'll be more. There'll be more strewing. What's the whole idea of being a strewer? So, well, it, originally it started when uh, there was nothing, very, you know, when everything smelt a bit sort of pungent. Right. And so you had generally had herb stewards in palaces kind of chucking to out To make it nice and sweet-smelling. Yes, yeah, ah, sweet-smelling thing. Good. But when George IV um, got his coronation, he was George III's son and he'd been waiting and waiting and waiting for his moment. Yeah. So he said that when he got his coronation in 1821, he would do the most lavish one that there was. Right. Uh, and then by that point, the sewer system was, you know, up and running, so it wasn't so bad. Right. But he thought, he had this friend, Anne Fellows, who is my five times great aunt. Right. And he, he wanted to reward her because she had witnessed an illegal marriage between his brother, the Duke of Sussex, in Rome. And so he said, I'll create this position for you of being royal herb stewer. Royal herb stewer. So it's in the family. So, right? so it's in the family. So, so it has family. to be in the family so for it has you to, be to in do the family. this. Now, who decides? whether or not you can strew... <laughs> well, it's the Coronation Claims Office, so they oh, seem to have wow. set this up for right. the King's coronation, and I just happened to spot something in the paper saying, if you have an ancestor who performed a role in a so previous cool. coronation, <laughs> you can prove you were directly descended. Yeah, yeah, which and, you can, of course. And you can prove that they did it, and we could do, and right. you think there's a good reason for them to do it, then apply. So ah. we thought, because King Charles has got such a long allegiance to herbs, and the pleasures Makes of gardening. Sense. Yeah. Makes sense. What sort of herbs will be in there? Do you know? Is it just like a big mixture of flowers and herbs? And would it, would it, I think, yeah. I mean, I'm the most hopeless gardener. Yeah. I, but, I, but the king will sort it out for you. It'll be <laughs> fine. Don't, it'll don't be else. sorted. It'll be fine. Would it just be you or are there other Well, stewies? when Anne Fellows did it, she was promised the job when she was quite young. And by right. the time the coronation came around, she's 56. And lots of people said to George IV, we think she's a bit too, you know, a bit old and plain. Honestly, how you I, I know, <laughs> they were. Uh, but he was very good, he kept his word. But to, to prettify things, they had six young maidens of gentle birth right. walking behind her. OK. But I thought, well, you could just, um, you know, find some amazing herb growers or yeah. gardeners. Or, Absolutely. you know, we could all walk together. That sounds really good. <laughs> it's fascinating, though, isn't it? And it does it does make sense because it, it has to be in the family and it is in your family. It is. I mean, it feels like a bit of a kind of, you know, a bit too much of a good win in the lottery. <laughs> you know, I feel like I've done quite well already. No, it's, it no, it's be, good. It's good. Be nice. You've got you, and this is the kind of thing that you could put in your books. Because you, obviously you've got a, a career as an author in your own right. Yeah. You could do all of that. It's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, yeah, great idea. There's lots of, lots of the intricate details that you know, people like yourself have got an right. association to the royal family. Well, it's I think, yeah, and I think the, thing is, the reason I um, found out about it was because somebody wrote a book called Keepers of the Kingdom about 25 That's years ago. That's right, yes. And he was basically, what he wanted to do was show that there are lots and lots of hereditary positions and roles that are not necessarily pusho stuff, you know. Yeah. Quite a lot of them are absurd. <laughs> but I uh, like that. You know, but, but yes, exactly. You know, it's so like change and modernise, but still acknowledge some of the good stuff. Yeah, you day. betcha. Listen, good luck. We let us know if it all goes well, yeah, and then well. and then you can come and we'll practice. Yeah, we'll practice screwing. <laughs> we'll practice screwing. It's terribly important. We have to get to everything. It has to be just right. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you.